What is up guys, it's Tony here, and today we are doing another montage editing tutorial for Final Cut Pro, and this is part of the Mac editing tutorial series, and today we are doing a highly, highly requested effect. This effect is literally requested more than any other tutorial request I've ever seen. And I think it's mainly because a lot of people use it in their videos, and it's very difficult to find a tutorial uh, on Final Cut Pro that does the Twitch effect. Uh, I've only seen one tutorial that shows the Twitch effect in a tutorial form, uh, but unfortunately it's in Spanish, and I really couldn't understand it myself, so I had to figure it out on my own. So, today I really got in there, I used my engineering abilities to figure out exactly how to get this Twitch effect going. So I had to do a little bit of research. It looks like the Twitch effect is essentially an RGB split with a bit of a shaking glitchy effect, which pretty much is not that difficult to do on Final Cut Pro when you get down to it. And you can make it look really professional and sometimes even better than the After Effects Twitch effects. In fact, I'm going to be using this in my future videos. So for the purposes of this video, I decided to go ahead and edit together a quick little optical flow demonstration where basically it goes through this clip by Zion from ESP, of course, who basically goes ahead and shoots in slow-mo, reloads in slow-mo, shoots in slow-mo, and reloads in slow-mo. So it's really nice to have this little clip uh, prepared so I don't have to bore you guys with me preparing a clip like I normally do. So we're going to zoom in here a bit on this clip, which is actually a very important thing to do because you need to be able to see the frames very finitely. Because if you can't, you're probably not going to be able to do keyframing, which is a very important part of this effect at least on Final Cut. So I'm going to go ahead and try to figure out how to zoom in here. There we go. That's that's is that good? That's not good. Let's do it one more time. There we go. That's good. That's good enough. So what you're going to notice is that on this clip here, you're going to notice that the selection tool, which is right here, it's the uh, sliding selection tool. Uh actually, what is it technically called? It's called uh skimming. There it is, skimming. Um it basically shows you the highlighted frame um, when you drag over it, so it allows you to see every single frame as you're keyframing. It's kind of important to be able to see that sometimes so you can count the frames more easily. I personally use the arrow tools. Some people don't use the arrow tools, but whatever works for you um, works for you. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start off by using the uh, first effect we're going to be adding here and keyframing, which is found in the effects tab. It is in vanilla uh, Final Cut Pro and is the prism effect. Now, the prism effect is simply a RGB splitter. It takes uh, the colors from a video and splits out every single color from the spectrum, giving you red, green, blue, and, of course, magenta. So it basically allows you to get a lot of different colors um, out of you know the, the main primary colors of video, out of your video, um, and it allows you to give a more like glitchy, old-school type of effect. And it's also just an interesting little effect to add to certain videos. And vanilla, when you look at it, it looks pretty cool, I guess. But honestly, that's not a Twitch effect. Let's take a look at that. So what you need to do to make a nice, proper, professional-looking Twitch effect is you're going to want to do a little bit of keyframing. That's, that's step one. So step one is to get into your clip, select anywhere, bring your mouse off of the timeline, and go with your arrow key to the first frame in the clip. I would recommend, of course, doing some optical flow, like 10% 10, 10 speed, because that adds a little bit more to the effect. Now go to the first frame, and you're going to keyframe in the Inspector tab, and you're going to bring it down to zero amount. Then you're going to go about, actually that wasn't the first frame, was it? It wasn't the first frame, so let me fix that real quick. I'll just go back one, and back again. There we go. So we'll go to the first frame this time, make sure you're on the first frame, and you're going to keyframe zero amount, right? Then you're going to move forward about 15 frames. And on the 15th frame, you're going to keyframe again, and you're going to go to about 32, which is the maximum on the slider. Yes, you can go ahead and do a lot more, but I wouldn't recommend it. I recommend just going with 32. It's a very minimalistic amount, and it looks pretty good for the Twitch effect. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go to the final frame of the clip, and you're going to uh, go back about 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and you're going to keyframe once more and you're not going to do anything and then you're going to move forward to the last frame and you are going to keyframe zero. Now what this is going to do is it's going to give a nice smooth transition into the clip and out of the clip uh, for the prism effect which is very nice and very uh, entertaining and it looks just more professional. So as you can see it kind of goes in and out. 
Now, uh, another thing you can do with the Prism Effect that I would not recommend uh, beginners to do, but if you feel experienced at Final Cut Pro editing, which you know some people do, uh, I would recommend going inside a little bit more and go like every five frames or so. That was five, I believe. Yeah, every five frames, I would recommend modifying the uh, amount of Prism Effect. So I'd recommend like going like a little bit like this at one point. Like get it. Well, actually, let's go like a little bit in, then go in five again. Was that five? Yes. And then maybe go um, up a little bit more, then go five again, go in a bit more, go five again. Was that five? I think that was five. And then go up a bit more, and then go five again. And uh, don't overdo it. I'm overdoing it a lot. And then go five again. And this is the one where it goes back to 32. So now, if you look at it, it kind of like goes in and out and kind of twitches a little bit. And that's why they call it the twitch effect, believe it or not. So when you do that, it gives you a nice looking twitch effect. It's basically more advanced uh, keyframing. In fact, I would recommend getting in there and doing every single frame and keyframing it. And I did it pretty quick there, so it's not going to look amazing, but it looks pretty good, actually. I, I, if I say so myself, for a quick, what was it, like a one-minute job. Uh, the next thing I would recommend doing is we got to add something where it shakes the camera. This is a very simple, it's not shaking much, so we want to add in a shaking camera effect. Now, on vanilla uh, Final Cut Pro with no plugins, the only choice you really have is, well, you could do the projector effect. I believe that shakes the camera a bit. And i got to be honest, that actually looks pretty good. So let's try the projector effect real quick. We'll take a look at it. And I think the projector effect does add a decent twitch effect. But uh, if you're into that, go for it. But if not, I would recommend, personally, this is the one I would use, the earthquake effect. The earthquake effect does it perfect because it doesn't add any coloration. And it just does a very nice, shaky effect. Uh, i got to be honest, the prism is a little insane at certain parts. But it still looks good. So once you do that, you let it render in. Um, you'll actually have a pretty cool looking uh, twitch effect. Now the one thing I'm going to recommend is that you turn down the earthquake effect a little bit. It's a little bit over the top at first, so I'd recommend like maybe, let's try two. That's pretty good. I'd recommend turning down the layers a bit. So that's okay. And then the other thing I would recommend doing uh, with this effect is I would also recommend doing some sort of keyframing with the earthquake effect. And what I mean by that is that when you're coming into the clip or when you're coming out of it, I'll do when we come out of it, I would recommend doing a keyframe. Actually, I think I put two, whoops, I put two earthquake effects. That's why it looks so shaky. So that's much better. In fact, let's turn that up a bit. Uh, we'll turn that back up to like nine. So yeah, that looks much better. That looks fine. Then what I would recommend doing is, once again, going to about 10 frames before the clip ends. And I would recommend putting a keyframe and then going to the end of the clip and then turning it down all the way maybe. So it kind of gives it the illusion that you're coming out of the effect, which is cool. Um, so we're going to go ahead and let that render once again just to see how it looks overall. And uh, let's see. And it looks pretty good. It's you know a nice little twitch effect. Now i got to mention that if this isn't exactly what you're looking for in terms of effect, let's zoom out a bit more and just look at it. And then, of course, you can add that to this one and that one. In fact, while I'm talking, I'll go ahead and start adding it to the other ones. Um, if this isn't exactly what the effect you're looking for is, if you want it to be a little bit less dramatic than all that rainbow in there, um, of course, you have to realize that you can modify it and have it be a little bit less extreme. So, for example, if I go into this one, I can make this one a little bit more um, simple and a little bit more basic. So we're going to go ahead and keyframe this to zero, go in about... 15, so that would be about 35. I'm using my frames here, by the way, to see how far in I am. Um, I would recommend going up to 32. I think that's like the bare minimum. And then go forward to the last frame. And we'll go in about 15, which would bring us down to, I believe, 508. And if we go in here and we turn this to, we'll keep it at 32, but we're going to have a frame. And then we go back to, whoops, that was way too much. Go back to the last frame and then turn that down all the way. So now when we do that, uh, it's the more minuscule prism effect. And if we go in here with the earthquake effect, throw that on there, it looks a little bit more simple and basic for the uh, twitch effect. In fact, uh, if you really want to, you can vary your earthquake throughout the entire effect. 
Now I'm going to show you uh, the last part of this tutorial is going to be the more professional looking one that requires unfortunately some plugins. Now with plugins you're going to have to go in with the prism effect and you're of course going to have to do the same old BS which is pretty much just keyframing. So I'd recommend coming in once again, putting this to zero, going in about 15, which is about 42, and then bringing it to 32, going to the end, bringing this to about zero, going in about 15, and bringing this to 32. So now we got the prism effect in full force. And what we're going to do that's a little bit special about this one is we're going to use some custom plugins. So we have the TKY camera shake effect. This is a really cool effect that uh, usually just gives you a little camera wiggle, which is cool. But if you turn this, uh, this shake speed up a lot, you get a lot more of an earthquake effect that looks more like the twitch effect. Uh, you can also turn down the speed and maybe just turn up the shakiness. Uh, I think that would actually look a little bit better for the uh, twitch effect. Maybe turn that down a bit and then uh, keep the shake distance as is. So we're going to go ahead and let this render and then we'll be back in a moment. I went ahead and took a more professional look at these two um, and decided to put in some more uh, plugins, more custom plugins. So we're going to go ahead and show you the whole clip now. Um, so basically, you start off here, no effect obviously. And you start off, you get the earthquake based effect. This one's a little bit noisy. As you can see, I did a little more noise there. This one was more basic with less noise, so it's kind of more of a more simplified twitch effect. This one is with the custom shake, which is pretty much a lot more like the AE twitch effect. And then on this one, you have a much more uh, keyframed twitch effect, which looks a lot better. And this is, of course, with the plugins. So when you use the plugin, it's very nice. And at the end, I went a little bit crazy with a little transition, and I did the standard Twitch effect once again. So this is pretty much my version of the Twitch effect on Final Cut Pro. You can, of course, modify these with any sort of um, effects that you want to add in or any little ideas you have. Uh, if you want a more um, on and off approach, you can pretty much just have like a bunch of little slow-mo bits in between one after another and do these effects exactly word for word without any of the um, fade-ins, the keyframing. So you can make it a little bit more dramatic and quick. Mine is more of a slow approach because I'm more into chill edits usually. So uh, I think it's a pretty cool little uh, effect and I actually had a lot of fun doing it and I plan on using it in future edits because I never thought of it before. It's actually a really nice idea. And it's also really cool for transitions, I found out, which is another little idea you can have with the prism effect. Basically blur it out all the way, and then on the next clip, blur it out all the way and have it uh, you know, slowly fade back into norm normalcy. So it's a pretty cool little effect. I think that was a lot of fun to make this tutorial and uh, play around and figure out this stuff on my own. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this and you want to see more like this in the future, go ahead and comment and like this video. And if you have any suggestions for other types of tutorials, as you can see, I am always open to recommendations, and I will be willing to do those as soon as I can. So if, comment those below, and I'll see you guys next time.